okay, so now that my work is my desired height, um, which is my, like I said, which is my waist all the way to about mid bust, um, I'm going to start sec sectioning this off for uh, my chest pieces and my back piece. So start by counting all of your stitches that you have, which are basically these little loops. Um, I counted 19, so I'm just going to round up to 20 because it gives it a nice even number. Now I'm going to divide this number by four. So this number is how many uh, stitches I'm going to reserve on the right and left of my work that are going to become my chest panels. Um, in addition to that, I'm going to actually subtract one because uh, with this one stitch on both pieces of my chest piece are going to be reserved for my neck hole. So 20 divided by four is five stitches, minus one is four stitches. So that's how you can calculate um, how big your chest panels are going to be. So for me, um, I, I will start working my chest panels. So one, two, three, four. I'm going to work rows of just four stitches all the way up until it is from my mid bust to my uh, to the top of my shoulder. Okay, so now, um, as you can see here, this is like mid bust. So this part right here where the other stitches are ended right about mid bust. And this is now towards the top of my shoulder, which is where like the seam is on my sweater. So this is the perfect height. Um, now I'm just going to cast off so I can sew this to the back later. I'm going to basically cast off taking the, the first loop um, of your row. So not the one attached to the tail, the other end and just pull them through like this. You may even want to consider keeping um, these nice and loose, these loops. So you might want to um, just undo your bind off and if, especially if it's too tight and then just make your loops much, much looser. Ta-da, that's it. That is your first chest piece. So now that I have done my first side, I'm going to go over to the other one and do my other chest piece. So I already went ahead and created a little slip knot. I'm going to have to make this way bigger, by the way, um, so just ignore that. And I'm going to start on this end and work in this direction for the next four stitches. And then I'm going to work this for the same number of rows as my other chest piece and fasten off the same exact way. And then once I'm done with that chest piece, I'm going to do the back section, but I will meet you back here when I'm ready to do the back section. Okay, so it's a little bit darker in here now, um, mostly because it's now dark outside. I took a little break for dinner. Um, so I finished this other chest piece. As you can see, it's, it's looking great. Um, same number of rows for the chest piece as I did for this one over here. Um, and I fastened off both of them. So now, um, I wanted to record this because I forgot, but what I did was this is the back section right here. These unworked stitches. I went ahead and started, um, it and joined my yarn to the very first stitch. And I'm going to work this entire back section with no stitches left behind um, for the same number of rows I did for my chest pieces. And then I will be right back. All right, I'm back. I just finished my back section. Um, some of my loops are a little... A little wonky but if um if your loops end up kind of like this 
you can pull on them in a certain way and uh, just adjust tension similar similarly to a way that you would do it in uh, normal knitting as well. Um, but I'll, I'll do that after and then sometimes if you give these a little tug, it'll also kind of even these loops out as well. So anyways, um, here's my back section. I think it looks great. I probably could have made these loops on this uh, side a lot more loose. Um, but overall, it's still fitting me really well. So I'm happy with it. So now I flipped my work over so that the front side is facing away from me and the back side is facing towards me. I'm going to fold in my um, chest pieces like this. And I'm going to sew the tops of them to the back piece now. So I'll fold the tops of these together, or I'll, I'm sorry, so I'll sew the tops of these together and I'll sew the tops of these ones. Um, and then this is essentially going to create like the body of my cardigan. Now, make sure that you work, or I'm sorry, that you sew through the same number of stitches um, for the chest pieces as you do on the back pieces. So since my chest pieces are only four stitches wide, that means I should only take up four stitches on the back piece as well. It's the next morning. And look, there's snow on the ground. If I can finish this today, I would have some really amazing pictures in the snow. Okay, so here's what it looks like so far. Standing up. I mean, the stitches are a little loose in a couple of areas. They're not really consistent, but I'm, I'm not hating it. I think it's really cute so far. Might have to figure out if there's a way to um, adjust some of the size of the loops because there are there is some gapping in a couple of places like right here that's really gonna bother me but overall I'm really happy and I think it's gonna be really cute. Okay so I just did my first pass at the sleeve and basically it came out really bad. Um, I just frogged it and what I'm going to do now instead is instead of um, joining my first loop here I'm actually going to put my loop through these these two loops like this. Um, I think that'll close the gap at the bottom. And then additionally, I'm not going to um, add a stitch at the very top because I think it made my, uh, my sleeve just way too bulky in general. Um, and then when I pick up stitches through here, it's, it is causing gapping. I don't really know how to prevent this other than to instead, um, instead of going through like the big loops, to pull up my stitches in. I'm probably going to go through my smaller loops, like right here. This is a smaller loop instead of this bigger loop. Okay, so I just finished the sleeve. Um, it is exactly how long I want it to be. It is just a little bit past my wrist so that um, when I cuff it, it'll have like a little bit of a puffiness, like fullness factor to it. Um, so now I'm ready to bind off or cast off. And um, I'm going to use the same method as I did before. I'm going to just take like my stitches 
and pull the, the loops through. And I'm not going to make my loops bigger because I want my sleeve to have more of like a cinched effect. Okay, so this is what it looks like after the cast off and as you can see um, it, it has like a curved look so it's nice and cinched at the bottom and my hand can still get through so now I'm going to just um, instead of using my hook I am going to just finger crochet it um, one row of single crochets all the way around the top of each um, loop or stitch Okay, so I'm really happy with the way that the cuff looks um, without the single crochets. So I removed it all together and now I'm going to do the same exact process for the other sleeve and then I'll be back to show you the finished product. All right, so this is what the final cardigan looks like. As you can see, some of the loops need to be tugged on and adjusted so that they are all an even size. Um, some of them are really loose and are causing some gapping or some bulging. So let me go ahead, adjust the loops and tuck in these ends and I'll meet you back outside. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed. I know it's not exactly the most, you know, professional or put together vlog in the world, but I really hope you enjoyed it and uh, stay tuned for more fun videos. Say bye, Jax. Say bye. <laughs>